Hi everyone, in one of my last videos you'll remember I modified my CSI power supply to give it the functionality of being able to read the current set just by pressing the buttons here and there was a small bit of Euroboard I'd put inside it with a relay etc and a 555 so when you press the buttons here it basically flipped the display over to read the current set on in CC mode and I also actually have another power supply on the bench here it's my dual channel CSI which has basically got exactly the same uh, design being a dual channel board the way that CSI or the Chinese manufacturer have done it has actually got two control boards you can see the first one here which is identical to the, the single channel one up there uh, so there's one board there controlling channel 2 and then you've got another similar board, identical board, covering channel 1 and it is actually exactly the same control board as the single channel power supply therefore um, I should be able to modify this power supply to have the same functionalities uh, on the push buttons there push the button here, the 555 will trip and it will flip over a relay which will then display the current set on the LCD however when I thought about doing this power supply, I actually thought I'll go and design up a board in Eagle um, and actually do a proper PCB and try and do a, a semi-professional job in providing a retro kit so that basically anybody could go and um, do the same modification without getting tied down to Vero board and all that sort of thing. So I've gone ahead and uh, designed up a board, I've just uh, assembled the prototype here so let's take a look at it. Okay, so what I've tried to do is pr uh, build a kit that's as easy as possible to retrofit onto the existing power supply with as little soldering as possible and basically just ease of assembly here. So basically what you can see here, I've got four um, plastic standoffs. You can see over at the far side there, you've got the same holes. The these holes appear to be pretty common on uh, the single channel power supply and the dual channel power supply. So I think it's just a, a common bracket that the manufacturers have provided to mount the control board onto the side of the transformer. Okay, so the idea is that I mount my PCB an inch off of this bracket here on these plastic standoffs. And the reason I've made it an inch is so that I can get access to the underside of the PCB. Because what I'm doing there is I'm going to have four connectors um, on the PCB for connecting to the rest of the power supply. The idea is, if you remember on my prototype that I've done in the single channel here, you've got on the back of the display board here, you've got this blue wire here. That's the actual um, signal, the vo a voltage signal, uh, 0 to 3 volt in the case of the, the single channel power supply, coming up onto this connector here in order to display the current on the DVM. And so what I had to do on, the, on my single channel board was cut this wire and then fit a relay effectively so that I can switch between two different signals driving the board. The original signal, which is coming from the electronics down there, and also the um, uh, new signal from my new board to, in order to drive the uh, uh, current set onto the display. So, But rather than starting cutting wires and that sort of thing, I thought I'd do it a slightly different way whereby um, basically we would disconnect the cables here, these two here. The reason I need to disconnect this one here is because this one's got 5 volts on it. There's no power supply on this connector here. There's 5 volts on this one here, which I'm going to use to power the board. So these two connectors will come up, plug into my board, and then there'll be two new tails coming off of the board onto the display there. So it's basically dead easy. So let's take a look at the board and see what we've got. Okay, so here's the circuit board here. As you can see, you've got the 555 and the op amp there and I've got on the underside I've got the relay and then the four um, connectors in the bottom. Um, these actually should be uh, SMD FETs but I got the footprint wrong in the PCB so I've just thrown on a couple of ZVNs there just in place of them but uh, on the final board that'll all be fixed there. So that's the board, it's pretty small, it's pretty simple, it's a single sided board Although I actually use a manufacturer who's, who actually contacted me and says, look, uh, it's easier for us to make a double-sided board than it is a single side. And I don't know if that's just because it was a prototype run, but that's what they've done. So in actual fact, it is a double-sided board, but I've assembled it as if it were a single side. Therefore, I put links, etc. on the bottom on the bottom there. So that's the board. And the idea being that, um, I'll mount it this way around. 
tails there, make it make nice and tidy there. So that'll then basically snap into place there. And these two tails here will then run up to those connectors there. And the existing tails will come up and uh, plug into the bottom of the board there. And, and an inch clearance here gives me plenty of room to, to, to make that happen. There are three wires, however, that do need soldered. Um, and these wires here actually interface onto the uh, control board. On, it's basically, there's a signal on the control board which isn't available out on one of the connectors. So I've kind of got little choice but to actually solder those wires in place. So um, that's it. So let me assemble it up, let me connect it all up, get it mounted, and then we'll come back. Okay, I've unscrewed this little rail here uh, just to make access a bit easier. And as you can see, that's the board all fully wired in. You can see you've got the, the tails uh, originally from the control board up that went up to the DVM now come up onto my board here then I've got two replacement tails coming off of my board and looped and up onto the back of the, the DVM there so picking up the 5 volts picking up the DVM signal and 0 volts as well uh, and on the board here you can see three wires that do need soldered on I've got a 0 volts connection there uh, I've also got the signal coming from the digital potentiometer which I'm tapping into and I've also got the signal from the up-down buttons here, on the front here, which uh, basically come up onto these two diodes there. Uh, I've got uh, tapped into there as well. So that's the only soldered connections that are required on the board. It's actually relatively easy, because it's pin 5 on this digital potentiometer um, that needs soldered onto. And, and you know by luck, that's on the corner of the IC, so it's pretty easy to get to. Uh, and the diodes, uh, either of the... Um, cathodes of those two diodes there will do nicely because they're both uh, joined together anyway. So we'll take a look at the schematic diagram for the power supply and just uh, a quick review of where I'm tapping into. Okay, again this is my sketch of the original schematic because it's not too clear in the original here. So here's the digital potentiometer I see here and you've got the um, wiper coming away off into the rest of the circuit there. So I'm basically just tapping off of that signal there directly on the wiper pin, pin 5 of the uh, digital potentiometer IC itself. And then across here you've got all this logic here that basically deals with the up-down uh, and CC slash CV uh, controls. Uh, I won't need to go into that. Um, but here we've got the two diodes here and we've got, uh, as you can see, they're shorted out on this side here going away off into the logic. So basically I'm taking a tap off of that there. There's no need to take individual wires off the, either of the up-down controls because they're basically getting uh, um, ORD basically on the other side of these two diodes there. So just quite simply taking a tap off of that there. Okay, off camera I've got my electronic load hooked up and I've got it dialed up to 5 amp which is the maximum range of the power supply. So I'm just going to actually run through the uh, the calibration um, of the actual potentiometer on the board itself which uh, gives you the flexibility to just trim the uh, display um, to exactly what it should be. So I've got it in constant current mode here. Um, so let me just turn on the uh, dummy load there. Okay, as you can see, we've got 5.02 amps, so that's basically the uh, real-time uh, load that I've got on the uh, uh, electronic load off camera. So, got I'm in constant current mode. So if I then just start pressing the, the the button here, you can see that I've got a current readout there, which is basically the current set coming from the board. As you can see, it says three amps there, so it's obviously well out of calibration. So. Just whilst I'm pressing the button there, I'll just start turning the pot there and you can see it going up there. So I'm actually going to turn it all the way up and let's see what happens. Okay, I think I'm at maximum now. So I'll press the button there. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's more or less correct with the pot all the way up. That's actually probably correct because the... Um, drive to the DVM is 0 to 3 volts and that's what I'm picking up from the digital potentiometer as well. Um, however, I have seen other power supplies where the, the, the signal coming out of the digital potentiometer is not exactly the same range that drives the board. So therefore by putting on a potentiometer on the board it allows me to trim that uh, 
um, read out uh, uh, correctly. But as you can see in this particular power supply, it's 0 to 3 volts is coming out of the control board and the DVM is expecting 0 to 3 volts. Therefore, uh, with the pot all the way up, I'm getting the correct readout on the display there. So as I said, I've got um, 5 volts, a 5 volt load right now on the output of the power supply which you can see there and if I press the button I'm getting the readout uh, of the current set which is also five, 5 amps there. So I'll just start winding that down now. So I'm adjusting the constant current uh, there which is 4 amps. The relay is turned off and I'm still reading the 4 amps. Uh, I don't know if you saw there, but on the board I've actually got an LED as well. So whenever you're in the, whenever the relay is tripped over, well, uh, the the LED will indicate when I'm in uh, this uh, uh, new mode. So I can press the button there, and as long as I keep on pressing them, you can see that the LED is permanently lit. Take my finger off the buttons, and then it'll switch back to the real time current output there. So that's channel 1 done, um, so probably what I'm going to do next is start working on channel 2 because I have got a spare board that I can go and assemble up and get channel 2 working. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to update the, the artwork as you saw an Eagle PCB there and I'm actually going to get a few boards made so if anyone out there is wanting one of these kits for their own power supply then uh, I'm sure I can put something together there. Um, ready assembled board, tested board, complete with the GST tails and the tails here go down, at the, go down at the control board. So it's basically just a case of snapping everything into place and then soldering on three wires here. So I'll probably put some uh, instructions together and build up a few of these boards. So if anyone wants any of them, just contact me uh, either, uh, well, preferably direct via my website at uh, www.ianjohnston.com and uh, well, we'll uh, put something together in terms of cost. So that's basically it. So uh, a nice little modification to one of my bench power supplies. Um, we'll get this one, uh, channel 2, up and uh, running as well and get it back on the shelf. Thanks for watching.